OK, so on um, as far as the incisor teeth go, the incisors are the two teeth, centrals and laterals in each quadrant next to the midline with the mesial surface of the right central incisor contacting the mesial surface of the left central incisor. So when you're doing your instrumentation or when you're looking at the teeth, um, if you start on the upper right and you're moving across, you're going to be um, up in the moving from molars to the incisors. So the mesial surfaces are on the front of the tooth. When you get to the midline, it's going to kind of flip. So the mesial surfaces are still in the front of the tooth, but you're going to be going, instead of going distal, middle, mesial, you're going to be going mesial, middle, distal. Does that make sense? So when you're like using your probe and you're probing your numbers, you're going to spot on three different places. You're going to take a measurement on the distal of the tooth, the mesial of the tooth, and then <laughs> the distal of the tooth, the middle of the tooth, and then the mesial of the tooth. When you get to the midline, your next thing, your next one is going to be the mesial, the middle, and then the distal, and you're going to keep going around like that. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, it's kind of important when you're going through um, all of this that you know what surfaces we're talking about so that everything else can make some sense. Um, the functions of the incisors is they cut food or incise. They articulate speech. They support your lips for aesthetic purposes. And they guide your mandible during movement. So all of your teeth, um, since they are in occlusion together, they sort of guide each other as to how they're supposed to end up together. There's a very specific pattern between the fossas and the cusps of how they should meet with each other and the incisors help to make that happen. Um, their most important function is to cut food. You bite into sandwiches and stuff with your incisor teeth. Your maxillary central incisor crown is the longest incisor crown. It is not the longest tooth, but it is the longer, cr longest incisor crown. And there are three mammalons on it and four developmental lobes. So as far as the developmental lobes, since it's an anterior tooth, we'll have three on the facial or labial surface, and we'll have one on the lingual surface where the cingulum is located. Your incisor teeth, if you look at the, this picture on slide five, is everybody okay? Do the slides match so far? Okay, I'm gonna assume they do. Um, you're going to start your lateral incisor on the upper right is tooth number seven. Central incisor on the upper right is tooth number eight. Central incisor on the upper left is tooth number nine. And lateral incisor on the upper left is tooth number ten. But then you drop down to the mandibular. The mandibular left um, lateral incisor is tooth number 23. Your mandibular left central incisor is tooth number 24. Mandibular right central incisor, tooth number 25, and mandibular right lateral incisor, tooth number 26. Um, your incisors have um, a contact as well, and if you look at the picture on um, slide 6A, that's how your incisor teeth, this would be like an, a side or a proximal view, this is how your incisor teeth should meet with each other. Um, they can wear on each other if they aren't meeting properly. And this picture on the right side, picture B, shows you how if the teeth are touching in the wrong places, such as edge to edge, that they will wear the tops flat. Some of you may have flat surfaces on your teeth. Those little wear spots are called facets, F-A-C-E-T-S. So we're going to go over some directions. This was brought up in your first chapter, but I kind of skipped over it because there was a lot of other terminology to learn in the first chapter. These are called directions. When we're looking at teeth and they're not in the mouth, like we're going to be doing in the lab where we're pulling them off of that little waxy thing, you can rotate them in your fingers and look at them um, from different views. So when we're talking about directions, if we talk about mesiodistal, 
That means we're running from the mesial side to the distal side of the tooth. In other words, we're looking at the facial or lingual surface. So if we're running from mesial to distal, that means we're running across the tooth. So another, if you took your probe and you went from mesial to distal, you're actually measuring the front of the tooth, right? Or the facial buccal labial surface. If we talk about occluso cervical, so the cervical area is the area where your gum line is. The area of the tooth closest to the gum line is the cervical area. The area closest to the biting or cutting surface is either going to be the occlusal or the incisal. So if we say occlusal cervically, we're talking about going from the occlusal surface to the gum line. So if you took your probe and you just dragged it from the occlusal surface to the gum line or occlusal cervically, you're actually dragging your probe to measure the height of something, the height of the tooth. We've got incisal cervical, which is the exact same as occlusal cervical, except it's going to be on an anterior tooth that has an incisal edge. And you'll notice that they change, just change the IAL to an O. So instead of incisal, or the AL, instead of incisal, it's inciso. Instead of occlusal, it's occluso. And then the other term. So like you've got buccal lingual, if you're measuring something and you drag your probe from the buccal to the lingual, you're actually measuring how deep or how, um, yeah, how deep the tooth is from, the, from the, the gum or the cheek side to the gum side. Um, and then you've got facial lingual, which would be, facial lingual would be the same as buccal lingual or labial lingual, those are the same, only Labio and facial lingual are on the anterior teeth. Buccal lingual is a posterior tooth. It's important that you know those different terms. So I would star those in your notes. Make sure you know what we're looking at because from now this point forward, we're going to rotate the teeth around and look at different surfaces. And so you need to know or make sure we're looking at the right surface. If you're looking at the wrong surface, you're going to answer the question wrong. So make sure that you know which of those surfaces that we're looking at when we are talking about directions. Does anybody feel like they need a little break or are we OK? Anybody speak up if you feel like we should take maybe a 10 minute break before we continue? Refill the coffee, anybody? OK. Now, um, as far as we're going to look at most incisor teeth from the facial view, so we're looking just right at your front teeth. Um, you're, they're relatively straight on the incisal edge. So if you have a mirror handy and you smile and you look at your incisor teeth, they're relatively straight across the incisal edge. And they're rectangular in shape. And I kind of drew some lines so you could see how they're pretty much rectangular in shape. So they're taller or inciso cervically. They're bigger slightly than they are if you go from the mesial to the distal or mesio distally. So they're a little bit taller than they are wide. And they taper narrower from the contact to the CEJ. So the um, the crown of them, I drew some like diagonal black lines that shows you that the crown is actually tapering narrower from the contact point to the, the root of the tooth or the CEJ. And then the CEJ curves toward the apex. What we're looking at there is I marked the apex of the root. The CEJ arcs upward toward the apex. So if you were to take your instrument and follow the CEJ around the crown of the tooth where the cementum and the enamel meet, it curves upward. It curves toward the apex. It gives you that nice little arch that curves upward. So all of your incisors have some similar characteristics that 
characteristics except your mandibular central incisors. They're kind of a unique tooth. So we're going to cover them completely separately. But the characteristics of your other incisors, if you're looking at them from the facial view or directly on at your smile, your distal crown surface is more convex than your mesial. So if you look at the, I marked the distal and the mesial of the tooth. So if you look at the mesial and the distal, the, the how much they round on the crown, you will see that your distal rounds more than your mesial. That's one of your identifying characteristics when you're looking at teeth that are not in the mouth, is you're gonna look at the angles of the two sides. The rounder one is gonna be the distal of the tooth. The one that's more um, right angled almost is gonna be the mesial of the tooth. So that's gonna be the starting point when I show you a picture of a tooth and you're not sure what we're looking at, the first thing you're going to do is identify the mesial side and the distal side. The mesial side is going to be more at a right angle. The distal side will be more rounded. The distal contact is located more cervically than the mesial contact. So in other words, the distal contact is going to be slightly higher toward the gum line than the mesial contact. So I drew some arrows and marked where the contact points or the widest part of the tooth where it touches its neighbor is located. So if you see on the mesial side of that drawing, it has more of a right angle and the contact is closer to the incisal edge. If you go around the distal side of that tooth, the distal is more rounded or more convex and the contact is up just a little bit higher. So in other words, where it's going to touch the tooth next to it is up a little bit higher on the distal than the mesial. Um, the incisal edges slope cervically toward the distal. So you can see on that bottom picture when I show you the incisal edge, the mesial side is, is down lower than the distal side. So in other words, the distal slopes up more toward the gum line or more toward the cervical area. On the, um, from the lingual view of an incisor, the lingual surface is narrow, narrower, um, seen best incisal, um, incisally. So if you flip the tooth up and you look at the incisal edge, the lingual surface is actually a little bit narrower than the distal surface. That one is really hard to see. We'll look, try to see it on the teeth in lab next week when we have lab, but that's kind of hard to see. Um, but just kind of know that the lingual surface is narrower on your incisors. If you look at your teeth in the mouth, they are your mouth is rounded. So the fact that the mouth is rounded, um, the teeth adjust for that extra space. So the lingual surface, if you measured the lingual surface, the lingual surface in general is going to be a little bit smaller than the facial surface. Marginal ridges converge toward the cingulum. So we looked at these yesterday. We flipped the tooth over to the lingual and we looked at the marginal ridges on the incisal teeth. And I kind of pointed out that the uh, marginal ridges angle toward the cingulum. So you can see how because the crown angles toward the root and the cingulum is right where the root is, the marginal ridges are going to angle toward the cingulum. Everybody following OK so far? Please ask questions if you have questions. On your um, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. Um, yeah. slides, slides number seven, seven and eight, eight are on your PowerPoint, but they're not on ours. OK, so it's the slides that you said that we needed to know. Are not but, in yours? Um, huh? They're not in yours. Yeah, they're not in ours. OK, I will. When we get done with the class, I will switch them out. I don't want to do it right now um, because that might be. Confusing, but. Um, or if you want to take a few minute break, I can switch them out real quickly. <laughs> 
Do you have a preference? Or should we just keep going and we can do them? We, you can look at those later. Whatever you think is best. All right, let's look, let's keep going and you can look at those later. Or if we have time um, at the end when I'm done, we can switch them out. OK, characteristics of incisors from the proximal views. So the proximal views means that we're looking at this, the part of the tooth that's between the teeth. The proximal sides of the teeth are the teeth where the teeth touch each other. That's the same. Um, that would be like the mesials and distals. So we're going to look at those sides of the teeth. These are the parts of the teeth we normally can't see with the eye when we're working on a patient because there's a tooth next to it. But if we were to take that tooth out like we're going to do in lab and show it to you, that's why those slides are not in your PowerPoint because I added them just to give you a better view of what we're looking at. The wedge, uh, the shape of the crown is triangular. So when we're looking straight on the facial or the lingual, the shape of the crown is going to be rectangular. But when you look from the, the proximal view, the shape of the tooth is triangular. The reason that happens is because the tooth comes down to an incisal edge or a point, basically. That's how it cuts. So it goes from wider to narrower that's to, to the incisal edge. We're on um, the slide. You guys are on the right slide, right? You can see where it shows the triangular picture. So the greatest bulge or the contour, the height of contour, and is going to be in the cervical third. In other words, it's going to the tooth is going to be the fattest up at the gum line, and it's going to come to a point as you come down toward the um, biting surface or the incisal edge. And then the root tapers to the apex. So the root's shaped like a cone and it tapers toward the apex or the tip. And then the CEJ curves incisally. And I drew an arrow there to kind of show you the CEJ curves down toward the incisal. Now the CEJ curves down differently on the mesial and distal, but right now just notice that the CEJ curves toward the incisal edge. The lingual, there's a concave lingual fossa incisal to the cingulum. So if you took your tongue and you found the cingulum on your lateral incisor, right after you get off of the cingulum and onto the enamel surface, there's a, um, a little concave fossa there, fossa being a, a depression or an indentation. It dips in a little bit right there. And your incisal edge runs across between the widest points on the mesial and distal, so that your incisal edge is that wide part between the mesial and distal. <coughs> Excuse me. Your labial outline is broader or less convex than the lingual. So if you look at the um, top surface, you've got the tooth and you're looking at the incisal edge, the top of it um, is wider and not as, as bulbous or as rounded as the lingual. See how the lingual is much um, wider as far as um, how much it sticks out? <coughs> Excuse me. We'll look at these a little bit more closely on the teeth too in lab. <coughs> Differences in the arches. So now we're going to look at the difference between your maxillary incisors and your mandibular incisors. Your mandibular incisors are smaller um, as far as the crown and the shape. They have smaller crowns. So there's a picture of a maxillary on the left, a mandibular on the right. Your mandibular incisors have flatter proximal outlines. So if you look at how much the, the um, outline of the tooth flares from the incisal edge or from the root to the incisal edge, the mandibular don't flare as much. The crowns are much narrower. The contacts are closer to the incisal edge. I marked the contacts with those light blue lines. On the tooth on the left, which is a maxillary central incisor, the contact points 
um, are closer to the gum line. They're still in the incisal third, but they're closer to the gum line. The mandibular teeth, the incisors, the centrals particularly, are almost right at the top of the tooth. So in other words, they contact their neighboring teeth almost right at the top of the tooth. That's why sometimes it's hard, especially when a person grinds their teeth and they've flattened out the incisal edges a little bit, it's hard to get floss between them because the contact sits right at the top. So you start to try to wiggle the floss in and it just sort of slides around across the incisal edge. So you almost have to kind of work it or thread underneath it and come up. Um, the roots are relatively longer compared to the crowns. So if you look at the crown to root ratio, the roots are a little bit or more longer than the crown compared to the maxillary ones. So if you compare the crown and root to on a maxillary and you compare the crown to the root on a mandibular, the root is longer than the crown on the mandibular than what it is on the maxillary. Mandibular incisors have smoother lingual surfaces. So if you take your tongue and you rub it along the lingual surfaces of your upper incisors, everybody do that right now, you can feel some of the grooves in the teeth. It's a little bit rougher. If you take your teeth right now, or your tongue right now, rub it against the lingual surfaces of your lower teeth or your mandibular incisors, they're very smooth. You don't, you don't feel all the grooves and stuff. So we're now we're going to compare the crown shape of, a, of the two maxillary incisors. You've got a maxillary centrals and you've got maxillary laterals. And we're going to compare the maxillary centrals to the maxillary laterals. So your maxillary central incisor has a wider, longer crown. So if you look at your own teeth and you smile, your maxillary central incisors are bigger crowns than your maxillary lateral incisors. <clears throat> your maxillary lateral incisor is relatively narrower. So there's there's kind of a there's kind of a big difference between the sizes of the crowns. Your maxillary central has a mesial incisal edge angle, I'm sorry, at nearly a right angle. So if you look at the picture on the right, which is your maxillary central incisor, I drew that little right angle kind of blue thing. So you can see that it's almost at a right angle. It's just a few degrees off. But if you look at the picture on the, the right side, I mean, sorry, the left side, which is your lateral incisor, you've got a little bit less than a 90 degree curve there. It's a little bit sharper of a curve. And then your maxillary lateral has both mesial incisal and distal incisal angles that are more rounded than the central. If you look at those two um, corners, you can see that the mesial of the central is more pointed than the mesial of the lateral. And same thing in the distal. The distal of the central is a little bit more round, is a little round, but the distal of the lateral is more rounded. Can everybody see that in the picture, I hope? The proximal contact area of the maxillary incisors from the labial view. So we're looking straight at your teeth and we're gonna look at the contact areas. The mesial and the distal contacts are in the incisal third. So if you took your tooth and you made horizontal lines and divided the tooth crown, not the whole tooth, just the crown into thirds, you would have an incisal third, you would have a middle third, and you would have a cervical third. So the area closest to the gum line would be your cervical third, the middle area would be your middle third, and the area closer to the incisal edge is the incisal third. So in chapter one, they talked a little bit about dividing the teeth. So that's how that one of the ways they divided it. The other way they went from mesial middle and distal. So basically they made a tic-tac-toe board out of the crown of a tooth. And so when you do that, the mesial and distal contacts are in the incisal third. And you can see that in both pictures, I marked the contacts with light blue and they're in the, the incisal third. But on the lateral, 
which is the one on the left, the contacts are more cervical than the central. So you can see the centrals are almost to the incisal edge. As you go back one tooth to the lateral, the contact moves up just a little bit. So it's still in the incisal third, but it's closer to the middle than the central is. And the maxillary lateral's distal contact is more cervical. It could be almost or into the middle third. So you can see that the contacts, as you go farther back, they're going to move slightly up or more cervical. I shouldn't say up because you could be looking at a mandibular tooth and they're going to be going down. On a maxillary, the contact goes from the incisal edge and it works its way up toward the cervical. There's something called a peg lateral. So it's a kind of a developmental um, anomaly that you can see in patients. You will see it in patients. It's called a peg lateral. So when the lateral teeth are forming, the crowns of the lateral teeth, they form in a peg shape. So they look like a little cone. It's a genetic condition. Um, so you will see it. Um, in families and you see it, you will see it in your practice. It's not that uncommon. Oftentimes the patient will have crown or, or some kind of um, cosmetic covering done on the tooth to give it the full shape because they look kind of like almost like canines, but they're even more narrow and pointier than a canine. So they're not a very attractive tooth most of the time. And so most of the time you'll have the patient will have some kind of cosmetic stuff done, but it's called a peg lab. So your maxillary central incisor root is relatively shorter than the crown. So the maxillary central incisor root is relatively shorter than the crown. So that's kind of worded funny. The, the root is still longer than the crown, but the crown is closer to the same size. The lateral, the crown and the root are a lot different in size and you can kind of see that in that picture the crown of the lateral compared to its own root is smaller than when you take look at the crown of the central compared to its own root the maxillary central root is shorter thicker and more cone shaped so it's a, um, a much thicker more broad root than the lateral incisor root of course, the crown is more broad, so the, of course the root is going to be more broad. There is a lingual fossa. The maxillary lateral has a deeper lingual fossa. And the maxillary later, lateral incisor has a pit at the base of the fossa. We will look at that when we look at our teeth um, next week, but that pit is prone to decay. So, uh, children who drink, or adults even, who drink a lot of soda, where they're sipping the soda and it's staying right against their front teeth, will commonly get decay in that cingulum. And then the maxillary central incisor cingulum is more developed and is off-center toward the distal. So when you're talking about the cingulum, you can feel it better, on your lateral incisor because of the fossa, but the cingulum itself is more developed and bigger than on the central incisor, and it's not centered. So if you were to take the tooth and you were to cut it evenly in half, the cingulum is going to be more on the distal, on the, on the central incisor. So cutting the tooth in half, it's not symmetrical. Your sides aren't equal. The cingulum is going to be more toward the distal. On the maxillary lateral incisor, the distal marginal ridge appears shorter than the mesial. So in this picture, this came right out of your textbook. I just drew the black line to show you. But the in this um, picture, you can see that the distal marginal ridge is shorter than the mesial marginal ridge because the incisal edge slopes more. The central incisor's incisal edge is more straight. The lateral incisor ed incisal edge slopes more toward the distal, and that makes the distal marginal ridge a little bit shorter.
Root shapes. This is where it's important to you because you're going to be root planing these teeth. All incisor roots have lingual surfaces that are convex. So in other words, the lingual surface bulges out more. The, the labial surface or the facial surface is a little more flat. The lingual surface is more rounded. So you can see that in the picture. These, um, this illustration, these are cross sections of the root. So that very top little circle was a cross section of where that line is. The middle um, picture of that root is where that about the middle of the root. And then the bottom uh, picture is the root closest to the crown. So the root gets wider as you get closer to the crown, as you can see, and it becomes more, um, the labial surface flat is a little bit flatter and the lingual is more convex. Does anybody have questions about that? Okay. Do you have this picture? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Okay. Cervical line of the maxillary incisors from the proximal view. So now we're looking in between the teeth again. As on all inside anterior teeth, the mesial CEJ curves more than the distal. This is important. Put a star next to it. This is how when we hold up our teeth in our hands when we're in lab, when I show you a picture of a tooth during a quiz or on a midterm practical or on a final practical and I have a picture of an anterior tooth, I might have a picture of the mesial and a picture of the distal and say which, blunt, which view is the mesial and which view is the distal. And the first way you're going to try and tell which one's which is that the CEJ curves more on the mesial than it does on the distal. And you can see where I drew the black line, the CEJ curves more on the mesial than the distal. This is important for you to know so that when you're doing your root planing and you're catching on something and you're not sure if it's calculus or the CEJ, you can kind of get a feeling of where the CEJ should be. And if you're on the, an area where the CEJ shouldn't be, then it's probably calculus. And then the largest proximal CEJ curve for all teeth is on the mesial surface of the maxillary central incisor. So the biggest amount of curve is what you see right there in that right picture on the mesial. Oh, that's not the central incisor. Sorry, never mind. It's on the maxillary central incisor. So the biggest curve is going to be right here on the mesial of your maxillary central incisor and it's going to get not as curvy as you go back but still going to be more curvy on the mesial than the distal for all your anterior teeth this is where your little cheat sheet study guide came in comes in a little bit handy so you can look at some of these things um, both maxillary central and lateral incisors have the heights of contour on the facial and the lingual in the cervical third so if you look at these two incisor teeth, the height of contour or the area of the biggest bulge on the facial and lingual is in the cervical third. So in other words, at the gum line, they start off fat, and as you get toward the biting surface or the incisal edge, they get thinner. And the widest part of the root is in the cervical third. So the widest part of the root starts out fat where the tooth is, when the enamel is and it or the CEJ and it gets thinner as it goes up. It forms like a cone shape. As far as the incisor crowns, if you're looking at the crown, so you've got the patient's head tipped back and you're looking at the shape of the incisal crown from the incisal view. So tip your own head back and look at the incisal view. The maxillary central incisor has a triangular crown shape and the maxillary lateral has a more round or oval shape. And that would be because the labial surface on the maxillary central is flatter 
the labial surface on the maxillary lateral is a little bit more rounded. The maxillary lateral has more labial curvature than the central. So that's another way of saying it's more rounded. And that's just another picture of what it would look like. That one came right out of the textbook. The mandibular central, now we're moving on to the mandibular um, incisors. The mandibular central is symmetrical. So if you took a mandibular incisor and you split it down the middle of the crown, it would look the same on the mesial and the distal. It is the hardest tooth to tell um, which side's the mesial and the distal when you're just holding it up by itself. Where does that come in handy, knowing the mesial and the distal? There are going to be times, lots of times in your career, when an orthodontist has extracted one of the lower incisors in an effort to straighten the incisor teeth. Now, they don't do it very often on young adults or children because they can easily straighten those teeth. But when you get to orthodontic treatment on an adult and their bone is already dense and um, the bone is really thin down there. So you don't have a lot of wiggle room to move teeth when you're looking at um, mandibular incisors. So an orthodontist will commonly on an adult patient take out one of the incisors. So the patient only has three incisors and the incisors then have more space to straighten and they don't have to manipulate around the bone too much. Um, there's a lot more that goes into that. You'll talk, we'll talk a little bit about it in perio, but basically if you move the mandibular anterior teeth too much and the bone is really thin, you'll cause recession. That does happen on younger people. We see it on younger people. They have to go get a tissue graft. But on a younger person, you know, they've got a lot of years. But on an older person, when you're doing ortho, you can usually get by with just taking out one of the incisors and not having to deal with the recession and the tissue grafting and all that stuff. So if you look at those that picture or those pictures, you can see that the mandibular central incisor is pretty symmetrical compared to the lateral. The mandibular lateral incisor is larger than the central. So unlike your maxillary incisors, where your central is much bigger than your lateral, the lateral is bigger than the central. And that's usually one of the ways you can start to tell when a patient has had an incisor removed because of orthodontic treatment, they oftentimes, you know, because they've moved the teeth then, so they're not in the same place where they should be. Um, the patient usually doesn't know which tooth they extracted. You can ask them, but they probably don't know. So if they don't know, you have to identify which tooth is missing. One of the first things you do is look at the size of the crowns. If you've got two wider crowns and one narrow crown, they've probably taken out a central incisor. If you've got two narrow crowns and one wide crown, they've probably taken out one of the lateral incisors. So you can kind of go from there as to which tooth has been extracted. The mandibular central incisor is narrower than the mandibular um, lateral incisor. And the mandibular lateral incisor has a disto incisal angle that is more rounded than the mesio incisal angle. The mesio and distal incisal angles are equal on central incisors. So in that slide, I marked the distal incisal angle and the mesio incisal angle. So these are where we talked just the other day in lab about how your angles meet or how you meet in the corner of a room. So your distal incisal is where your distal surface and your incisal edge meet. Your mesial incisal is where your mesial surface and your incisal edge meet. And so on the mandibular lateral, it's more rounded. Um, it has a distal incisal angle that is more rounded than the mesial. On the central incisors, they're the same. Because remember, the central incisor is symmetrical. So if you cut it in half, both sides are going to look the same or be mirror images of each other. The lateral is not like that. If you cut a lateral in half, one of the sides is going to be more rounded than the other, and that's going to be the distal side. So if you were holding a tooth in your hand and you knew it was a lateral incisor, or let's start with how would you know if it's a, if it's a central or if it's a 
um, if it's a lateral, the way you would know if it's a central or a lateral is that on the lateral, the distal would be a little more rounded. So you would know right away that's the distal. The relative size of the incisors, you can see in this picture, your central incisors on your maxillary are bigger than your laterals. On your mandibular, you can see that the laterals are wider than the centrals. Your contact points on your mandibular centrals, the mesial and the distal are at the same level. So again, you're gonna slice the tooth in half you're going to have mirror images of each other. So the contact points are going to be in the exact same spot. The mandibular lateral has a mesial contact that is more incisal than the distal. Just like the maxillary lateral, the mesial contact is more toward the incisal edge and the distal contact goes a little more cervically. So on the maxillary teeth, the contacts are going to go up toward the cervical on the mandibular teeth, the contacts will be going down toward the cervical. But either way, they're both going toward the cervical. The root to crown proportions of the mandibular incisors. The mandibular incisor roots appear to be longer relative to the crown than the maxillary incisor roots. So if you look at the this picture, this is right out of the textbook too. On the left side, the maxillary central, the crown to root ratio is closer than on the mandibular, where the root seems a lot longer than its own crown. As far as the root shape, the distal, there's a distal bend of the root tip and that's more common than a mesial. So whenever we are taking a quiz or a test, if I have a picture of a mandibular incisors, incisor, the root on my picture is always going to be bending toward the distal because it's less common or more rare for it to bend toward the mesial. So if I have a tooth and I want you to identify which uh, mandibular incisor it is, you're going to first probably look at which way the root tip bends. When you're looking at a patient's mouth and you're doing your restorative charting, you're not going to have a picture of the root yet, unless you have x-rays already. But let's assume you don't. You're not going to have that ability to look at the root. So you're going to have to identify the incisor based on the appearance of the crown. If you, um, if you have a root picture or a, a, a radiograph or an image, you will see the root bend toward the distal most of the time. So if the patient is missing an incisor and you don't know which one it is, you can kind of put your, your sleuth skills together and you can look at which way does the root bend. You can look at the incisor size of the crown and you can get an idea of it's a, if it's a central or a lateral. And you should be able to figure out pretty easily um, which tooth it is that's missing. Both mandibular incisors have mesial and distal root depressions that are more prominent than in the maxillary incisors. So we're going to talk a little bit as we go through all of these chapters about root depressions and root grooves. Those are important because when you're root planing, you need to get your instruments into those grooves. And if you don't know where the grooves are, you're probably not going to get your instruments in them. And so you're going to miss calculus. And if I'm in clinic, I'm going to be there reminding you why you missed that calculus or asking you questions about your root grooves. But some of the instructors may not do that, but I will torment you. Um, so the mandibular incisors have mesial and distal root depressions that are more prominent. So when you're scaling and root planing, your um, mandibular incisors have deeper root grooves on the mesial and the distal. And so if you think about where your salivary glands are and how much calculus a person builds up on their mandibular incisors, and now you've got to factor in deeper root grooves. So you're going to be doing some pretty um, aggressive scaling on those teeth most of the time. You got a lot of action going on on those mandibular and inc central incisors. The mandibular lateral cingulum is more distal to the mid root axis than on the centrals. 
So if you were looking down at the clues or incisal edge of your lower incisors, so we're, you have your mouth open, you're laying back in the chair, and we're looking down at the top part of the incisal edge of your incisors on the mandible. Your mid-root axis, which is like the, the center of the tooth, the cingulum is dis, more distal to the mid-root axis on the lateral. So in other words, the cingulum is not centered, it's more toward the distal. And that picture I tried to show you as best I could that on tooth number 25, the central incisor, the cingulum is right in the middle because they're symmetrical. If you cut them in half, they're the same. The lateral, on the other hand, if you cut it in half, it's going to have a few features that aren't going to be the same. One, the cingulum isn't going to be right down the middle. It's going to be more toward the distal. Um, and then the other thing is that the other difference you're going to see is the, the angles of the um, edges. So your mesial incisal is going to be more square and your distal incisal edge is going to be more rounded. And then all mandibular incisors have minimal marginal ridges and fossa depth. So in other words, if you take your tongue and you run them along your lateral incisor, I'm mean here, mandibular incisors, you're not going to have that same deep fossa feeling that you get when you do your maxillary incisors. They're pretty smooth all the way across. Thank goodness we have something going for us when we scale. You don't have all the grooves and everything. They're pretty smooth. And then the CEJ curves toward the incisal edge more on the mesial than on the distal. So remember on all incisors, um, the mesial CEJ curves more than the distal. And I showed you that picture there, the mesial and the distal, you can see the, that there's more curve on the mesial. And then um, the buccal and lingual contours it, for central incisors and lateral incisors are in the cervical third. So if you look at the how um, wide is the tooth or how much does it bulge, the biggest um, height of contour or crest of curvature, it's in the buccal and lingual um, is in the cervical third. So in other words, it's wider along the gum line, the widest part, and it gets tapers narrower to the incisal edge, which makes sense because you want your incisal edge to be sharp for biting. So on both the maxillary and the mandibular, it's wider up at the cervical and it gets narrower when you go down to the incisal edge. And then there's a picture of a cute little dog. I'm a dog person, so you'll see pictures of dogs occasionally in my PowerPoints. Does anybody have questions? Anybody at all? OK, so um, when we're in lab next week, we will look at um, the incisor teeth. The incisors are pretty easy. The canines are pretty easy. The premolars and molars get much more complicated, but by the time we get to the premolars and molars, you should be more familiar with the terminology. So when I say mesiodistal, you will know exactly what surface we're looking at. If I say we're looking at the proximal surface, you'll know exactly what we're looking at. So by the time we get to the premolars and molars, you should, that part should come easily. Right now, if you're still struggling trying to figure out which view we're looking at, that's okay. We just need to keep practicing and we'll get it down. Anybody questions? I just had one quick question um, regarding the quiz.